C is very widely available. It's very easy to price, so it doesn't go on a whole market. And from a whiskey perspective, it is a very delicate, very palatable, very well balanced. The second whiskey will be the latest Indian whiskey uh, on the block. I like trying it. In I like recommending it. Uh, and it has become quite a favorite for me. A lot of flavors, but again, very well rounded, very bad. So there's sharpness or harshness that come to taste. The third whiskey is one of my all time favorites. It's slightly overpriced, a la double but uh, it's a whiskey that I would recommend everybody. You know, we always say that peat and sherry are very heavy flavors and they tend to overpower the whiskey. But this one is just perfect harmony of the flavors worth every money that you spend on those. The fourth whiskey that I would recommend is uh, Glen Moranji Lasaka, 12 year old. Glen Moranji is one of my favorites. It's, they have tall skills, so the liquid is really fine. And even though Lasanta is a sherry cask whiskey, the flavor really carries so well and it's very easy on them. And my first recommendation is the Altmore Bellevue, a space ice classic, very floral, very grassy, and a very delicate whiskey. So it's very easy for people to have it and it just keeps it that easy.
Tomorrow is the day. How can you go for the final? Morning, then we can go. Yeah, come. Today is your last class. Huh? You want to take photo with me? Huh? Okay, when you want to take? Now? Huh? Ah, better now huh? because later on I have to rush there. My daughter is doing that. Yeah. You want to take in front of Yes. No, no. Come, ask somebody. Hey, all right. Oh, it's in uh, that, that place already reserved for you already. Huh? You better write down your name there. This in so that nobody takes your place. So, oh, same pants both of you wearing. Oh, okay, right. <laughs> So girls love to do this and they like to see what other girls are wearing. <laughs> right, right. So the man in black is already here. Who is the other one? You're supposed to have five. Who is the other person? Who of you only here what? Of course, you guys won't know who is the other person. Uh, let me check. Uh, oh, this uh, new student, I think. Uh, I'm sorry that I will be late for class. Okay, right. Never mind. This uh, new student from the Chinese school. Oh, yesterday, uh, Zizin, uh, uh, your, your, the, the boy came for the class. Uh, Zhang Zimin. Yeah, his uh, nickname is Kevin. Correct. So he says uh, he knows you, but both of you are not in the same school because he's studying in Marlboro. And you guys are in Sunway University, right? Or oh, Sunway uh, School, International School. Okay, right, Sunway International School. Huh? And uh, of course, uh, he can speak very well. He says uh, he is very quiet. He told me that Zeyun is a very quiet boy. He doesn't talk much. Huh? So 
That's what everybody thinks about you, that you are too quiet. Okay, so you need to improve your speaking huh? so that, uh, you know, you are, you are, you know, uh, you can sit for exams and all those things. Otherwise, you will forever remain quiet like this. Huh? So that is going to be a problem. But he can't come on other days because he can look like he can only come on a Saturday. He cannot come on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, all he can't come. He can only come. So most probably you guys will not meet him. But uh, he will be here, but you may not meet him or something like that. Unless both of you decide to come on Saturdays. Otherwise, uh, you can't see him at all. Huh? But never mind, since he's your family friend, I think it's not a problem at all. Huh? Okay, let's go back and start your class uh, instead of, uh, uh, you know, uh, talking or something like that and uh, all that stuff and waste our time. Okay, right. Huh? So you can see uh, today's lesson, you, uh, I'm, uh, I'm sure the girls, uh, especially Irene and, uh, and uh, Nadia and of course Zizin, uh, not only the three of you, uh, all girls, uh, in fact, my two daughters also, normally you guys are very fashion conscious. Uh, fashion conscious means uh, you look at the new trends, what people are wearing now, what is being sold in new in the, in the shops, in the supermarkets or something like that. So this is what normally girls tend to do. But for guys, I don't think so. But maybe new uh, in the new generation, maybe yes. I know one guy, one guy in our class who is very fashion conscious. I don't know whether you know him or not. I think you guys might know him. He was in level two, Sean. Right. He is very, very level conscious. And he wears things that, you know, according to fashion and all those stuff and all that. Huh? I noticed that he's a very... He's not been coming for class for some time, maybe exams or something like that. I'm not very sure. But uh, maybe he's busy or what. He usually comes on Saturdays and Sundays, but he's not here today. And the other boy also is not here. Uh, what's his name? Desmond. The small boy who always sits in front here. He seems to be missing for quite a number of classes already. Maybe he has some, uh, uh, probably Chinese New Year has gone out here and there or whatever it is. Huh? Okay, right. Never mind. So let's ask this question to you guys, huh? because I cannot judge you by saying that you are fashion conscious. So Zizin, I ask you first, do you follow the fashion in the world or in Malaysia or in China? What are the changes that are taking place? Hmm. Hmm. Very good. Huh? So you don't actually follow trends, but uh, everyone has their own style or something like that. So whenever you feel like uh, wearing something, you just wear. Huh? You don't bother about what is today's trend or tomorrow's trend or whatever. It is. What about Nadia? Hmm. I see. But what about the tudung and all that? That one normally you match with your with your baju and all that, right? Because you want it to look nice, isn't it? Okay, right. Huh? Irene. Irene simply hanta money. Every day wear shorts. <laughs> isn't it, Irene? Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Oh, you admire them. Okay, right. Huh? She's a very simple uh, girl. Uh, how about when you go to school, you don't go like this, right? Oh. <laughs> of course not. Huh? Yeah, of course, freedom. Huh? Because tuition class only, so she can just come uh, anyhow she likes, but uh, of course in school you can't be, you have uniform? No uniform, but you can wear what you want. Okay, right. What about Ziyut? Uh, yes, we are waiting for your answer. You wear? Or random, at random, huh? you wear anything that you like to wear, same like your sister. But do you go to the, yeah, come, come. Do you go to the, like, uh, uh, not supermarket, but uh, if you go to like a mall or something like that, uh, do you look for the latest? No, no, no such thing. You just buy whatever you feel like buying. Okay, right. Huh? So this is our new student, but not exactly new. He has been for uh, one or two classes already. And uh, you're from Chinese school, right? Yeah. Yes, uh, he's from a Chinese school. And uh, which one? Funyu, isn't it? 
Kulai. Eh? He's from Funyu High School in Kulai. So uh, uh, that is uh, Zizin. Zizin is from Sunway International School. And uh, Nadia is uh, from, uh, uh, she's uh, start doing a course uh, in Australia. And Irene studies in uh, Singapore. And uh, Ziyun is uh, the brother of, uh, of uh, Zizin. All right. And he also studies in uh, Sunway International School. All right. Okay, right. So I think uh, it's uh, enough of the introduction. So what we do is uh, let's try and find out something from, uh, uh, from uh, Cheng Shen. Uh, his name is Cheng Shen. All right. Uh, of course, he's a bit tall. So Nadia, he'll be blocking you, right? I think. So don't worry. All right. So uh, Nadia, today is your last day. You, look, you seem to like, uh, like no problem like that. You don't miss me. Huh? After class only, you'll miss me. Okay, now you don't miss me. All right, huh? so sad. Huh? You see, I didn't miss me early in the morning. Already. She must have come and take photograph with me. <laughs> Isn't it? Huh? Okay, right. No, no, I teach her just joking only. Huh? Because sometimes, uh, you know, we, uh, uh, we enjoy our classes uh, here. Uh, and naturally, uh, of course, uh, uh, we tend to grow, uh, you know, have a liking for each other. Uh, and uh, as a teacher and a student, uh, I tend to feel to like to teach you guys sometimes, uh, which is uh, it's a natural. I think in school also, you might have feel that some teachers have got favorite students in the class. It's normal. I think in Chinese school also would have been the same thing. Some the naughty ones, the teacher don't bother. So you shout, uh, you shout or do whatever you want in the class. I'm not bothered about you. But the really studying one, the teacher will pay attention. Uh, the teacher will focus on them and make sure they do well. The others, they feel that teacher feels that I teach you also same lah. You don't know, you don't improve. It's your problem. All right. So that, that's why uh, there is always a certain level between the student and teacher. Teacher also can get fed up. Uh, teacher will get fed up. But of course, here is a paying, uh, is a paying place. So most probably uh, a teacher has got no right to get fed up with you. Isn't it? Uh? So no matter what, uh, the teacher has tried try his best to Make sure that you follow the classes or something like that. Huh? Very important. Okay, right. So let's uh, go back to our our Cheng Shin, huh? Cheng Shen. Sorry, are you fashion conscious? Fashion conscious. Do you like to wear clothes that is uh, latest now in America or in UK or in France or something like that? No, you just wear whatever you you find at home. Okay, right. Very good. So so looks like none of you here is fashion conscious. All right. Okay. Right. Huh? So, uh, yeah, I think myself, uh, if you ask me this same question back, I don't think so. I bother about fashion or whatever it is. Huh? Sometimes you might have seen uh, I wear my T-shirt but uh, or T-shirt or shirt uh, twice in a week or something. Like, why? Because I come here only for one class. You get my point? No? I come here only for one class. And if I were to go and wash the shirt, the color of the shirt becomes... You know, what do you mean by it becomes pale very fast? So you wash it, you keep washing it, washing it, the color will go off. Some of the shirts nowadays, the color will go off very fast. So what I do, I go and nicely go and hang the shirt in the house. Then the next class I come, I wear the same shirt. I don't find it anything because here got aircon. So probably I, I save on that. So I'm not like fashion conscious or I must change. The students will be watching me or whatever it is or what. You know, my wife, uh, my wife and children bought for me five or six perfume bottles, all lying in the in the thing there. And uh, every day I will think that oh, must put some perfume here and there. But every time I forget, never ever put a perfume on my shirt or whatever it is. Uh, I just forget doing that uh, at all. Uh, but my children like the the powder that I use for my body and all that. It is called Kutikura. Have you have you heard this brand? It's a it's an orange color bottle. You can find it in my day only, I think. Kuti Kura. It's, uh, this is the spelling. See you, like Chuti Kura or something like that. Huh? So it is, this is, uh, you can get a small, uh, small plastic uh, thing and a big one and a long one. Also. There are three types of things. But this one has been around for the past 50 years. Old people like this. So naturally, you know, I'm not young people. Huh? So I'm old man. So definitely, that's why I like this. Okay, right. Huh? So this is my favorite powder. And then my children will say, oh, that today you're wearing powder. Huh? So because the smell is very strong. Okay, let's continue, guys, uh, after the fashion, guys. All right. So you see, huh? 
it says here our lesson today of course is british english huh? like every day we do british english also and this lesson is something connected with upper intermediate huh? that means the wordings or the vocabulary here will be of a higher level so it's good for you all right and uh, the first warm up question have you ever rented any items of clothing this one let's ask is in first rented means you want to go to a party or you want to attend somebody's uh, wedding or something like that there are places even in in job bar also we have we have place where you can rent the baju uh, you can rent you pay the money then you give it back to them i don't know you need to wash it and give it back to them or i'm not very sure have you ever done it never uh, you never never also never you okay but there are for example uh, for weddings i know there's 100% there for weddings Weddings means you are the bride or the bridegroom. You don't want to go and buy the clothes which is so expensive. You know the girls' one, the long one. You have to pull on the floor and all that. What for? You want to go and buy the bride's dress. But if you pay about two or three hundred, you can rent the baju. So you use it only for one day, and you don't have to keep it anymore already. So that is called rental of clothes. But in JB also, you can try on Google and see. If you don't believe me, teacher can try and and do it for you. this is something practical we can do in the class eh? no problem at all just hold on let me try and see and then show you a huh? clothes rental yes uh, clothes uh, okay right clothes uh, rental huh? let me see clothes rental in jb all right All right. It says I wrote clothes. It says dress rental. See, shop dress rental in JB. You saw. You can rent any dress that you want if you want to go for a party or something like that. Right now, no need to go and buy expensive dress and all that. No need. You see, you just call them up. See, so many, so many uh, things there. You can see. That's why teacher is saying, don't think that is something new here. It is already there for a long time. Ah, uh, it is already there for a long time. you can go and rent any uh, any type of clothes that you actually want uh, to use or something like that and then you can return it back to them but i think you have to pay some deposit otherwise you take away the clothes and run away to australia or what we need all right so when are you going to australia girl next tuesday or oh, monday tuesday you're going already so from kerala or singapore oh kerala yeah so anyone wants to say bye bye to nadia you better say bye bye to her because uh, we won't see her again next week all right of course huh? but uh, she came here very short while one month only for doing a thing but after this i think she will be doing some online classes i don't know whether it's with me or with some other teacher uh, because uh, for online uh, normally i do only one to one that means one student with one student but if she is doing together then maybe she might get another teacher to do it or something like that huh? okay right never mind uh okay we have done that have you ever rented any items of clothing so all your answer is no all right now what you do is you see it tells you match the terms on the left to the definitions on the right some of you may have already done it already you did take a paper it's in front it's in front there go and see our uh, 9:45 am class I didn't know he was not having a paper. He should have told me that, teacher. I don't have a paper, right? He just sat there listening to me. Oh my God! Okay, never mind. I hope we can find it. Yeah, come, come. Don't have, huh? Hey, you have this first. Did anyone of you take two? No. Check it. Because sometimes oh. uh, he is always the naughty boy. Told you that. Okay, right. Okay, no problem. Sometimes it sticks together. Ah, uh, that's why I told you sometimes it stick together, and uh, you might not know it. So it's not his fault. Ah, uh, he went out there and said no. All right. Okay, right. Ah, uh, so you see, ah, uh, this is the reason. Ah, uh, sometimes you cannot get angry or lose your temper or whatever it is for something that you you might feel. What if I scolded him and say, "Oh, you cannot see ah? Why you didn't see the thing there?" So what will happen? He will get upset with me, right? Ah, so you have to be very patient sometimes. 
because we may not, this is experience in life. Uh, experience in life because don't lose your temper unnecessarily because we don't know what could have happened. All right. Maybe really not that. All right. So that is a problem that uh, we actually have. Uh. Okay. Okay. I don't want you to waste your time. You have a look at the, at the thing there. All right. Finish your deal, let me know, huh? Okay, can we try? I think if I don't ask you, you will take the whole day to do it. Huh? So it's better that I we start doing it. Huh? First one is over consumption. Consumption means what? It is the usage of things. Huh? So we are consumers. We, cons we consume a lot of things like food consumption. Huh? Your car has got petrol consumption. So over consumption means you are doing, you're using something extra. Huh? More than that is needed. So what is the answer for overconsumption, guys? C, huh? yes, buying and using more than is needed. So the answer is C. Very good. And what about number two, a uh, garment? A, huh? yes, a piece of clothing. All right, garment is normally called a piece of clothing. What about number three, landfill? Yes, a place where rubbish is buried. That's called a landfill. And after a landfill, you have number four, disposable. E, huh? B, okay, right. Let me have a look. Yeah, designed to be thrown away after one or few uses, especially the plastic paper cups, paper plates and all that, uh, the spoon, fork and all that. After you use one time, you're supposed to throw it away. But you know, huh? It also causes an environmental hazard. All right. These paper cups and plates actually cause an environmental hazard. Last time, remember, we are using the foam. But they found out that the foam is even worse. Uh, the foam is even worse. So they, they completely uh, block the use of foam. Uh, foam, uh, you know, that you go to the economy rice, you pack the thing in the foam. Uh, so that one is even more bad. The chemicals that are released when you pour hot inside is uh, very bad already. Uh, so that is one reason why we don't use foam anymore already. Next, disposable, guys. Have we done that? Yes, uh, number five is overhaul. H, uh, yes. To examine a system carefully and make changes to improve it. 
Where do you, you normally use this word overhaul? What do you overhaul normally? Let's see whether any one of you here knows. It. This word is very commonly used somewhere. Overhaul. Overhaul my what? Yeah, who drives cars here? I didn't drive a car. Yes, you drive a car? No. Do you, you drive car now? No. No, you don't drive a car. Yes. So overhaul. Never heard of car overhaul. He had one before. Huh? Car overhaul means if your car is 10 years old, your engine may not be very good. Already, so you have to send it to the mechanic. They will take out the whole engine eh? and then they will clean up the engine. They will change certain parts of the engine to make it powerful back again. That is called overhauling a car. That means something that is old, you make it back into, uh, into better back again. Huh? That is overhaul. All right. And after that, you have repurposed guys. Yes, yeah, G, yeah, to adapt something so that so it can be used in a different way. So that is uh, repurpose something. All right. And number seven, leasing. Yes, sir. That should be the right. Making an agreement to pay to use something for a specific period of time. You can lease a car or something like that. That means car rental. Uh, that is called leasing. Huh? Okay, right. And also number eight, a lifespan. Yes, of course, F, the length of time that something is good enough to use, a product or something like that. How long you can use this product. That's why normally they have warranty periods for laptop, handphones and all that. After that, it's up to you if you can, if it can last. After that, you can't go and complain to the fuller that, hello, I, buy the, I bought this thing new and then now it cannot work. All right? So that is your lifespan. Even human beings have a lifespan. All right? The parts in your body goes throsa, you, uh, you die. Isn't it? If you can change the parts, then very good. You can live some more. Like in Malaysia, we have our old prime minister who has changed his spare parts a few times and he's still living. <laughs> I think you know whom I'm talking about, our Dr. Mahathir. Huh? He is already about 96 years old. He has gone for two heart uh, bypass and uh, uh, transplants and all that. So he's a lucky old man. That, that's why he can live for a very long time. But of course, he's also got money. Huh? If you got no money, the doctor said, sorry, you can go and die. Yes, of course, huh? because you can find the best treatment in the world, you have money. If you don't have money, where you want to go? Huh? But sometimes you will have to die also if you have all the money in the world also. Huh? Like uh, Pele. Pele is one of the world's famous footballers. Huh? Last year he died. So nobody can help him because uh, he, he had failures of many organs in his body. Huh? So that is the problem. That Okay, let, let's try and uh, uh, we have finished this. Are there any word problems that you have from here? From the number one, number two, number three, number four, until number eight. Any words or vocabulary that you don't understand? All okay? Yes, so okay means uh, what we will do is, uh, of course, for number three, we need to go and do the reading first. All right? Before we do the reading, we cannot go and uh, find the answers for number three. Huh? So it is nice to know that we have five of you down here. And we have actually 10 paragraphs down here. So it doesn't matter if the paragraphs are bigger or smaller or something like that. Maybe each of you can take uh, two paragraphs. All right. So you will have exactly five of you down here uh, to finish the paragraphs. So we start with whom? Uh, I think every time start with uh, Zizin, Zizin gets upset. Huh? Maybe we can start with our uh, Shin... Uh, Okay, right. Uh, you, you start first. One and two. Huh? Then Zi, Zin, uh, Zi Yin will read uh, three and four. Nadia will read five and six and, ho and so on. Okay, let's just start. Right. Yeah. 
Good, next. Values, girl, values. Mm. Creates. Value, value. Mm. Not value, huh? Value of clothing. Mm. Disposable. Mm. Clothing, yeah. Yes. Sustainability. Policies. Mm. Mm. Garments. Mm. Mm. Okay, good. Five and six. Okay, last one. Uh, Nadia, would you like to have a class photograph? Yes, huh? I think, yeah, now, because uh, I don't think I will have a time later on. I think you can come and stand inside. Huh? You just stand up for a while. You just take a selfie or something like that. Mm -hmm. The last class, maybe you can just stand there and it's easy. You can just stand here or something. Yeah? Uh, we just uh, take a, I don't know how you want to do it. Can you want to do it like that or can or you think uh, all of us stand up and uh, take a like this, can I? 
Which got a long hand? I see he's got a long hand, right? Which hand is longer? I'm I'm very poor in taking selfie. Oh, what's up? What's up? Okay, right. Somebody who is, uh, is good at it can organize. What's up? You can take? Okay, right. Very good. All right. Yeah, I think you need to stand up. I think this is you can stand up. Otherwise, you can't take it. You need to stand up. No, no, no. You, you don't need I think both of you sit down. And uh, maybe something like this or what? Can I? Won't be able to. Yeah? Oh, you want to sit down? Can, can, no problem. Yeah, don't fall down. All right, ah, that's better. Okay, right. So now you have the banana. Huh? So uh, that's what I was thinking. No, the problem is that because later on, my daughter is going back here. The bus is at 12 30. So I have to rush from here and then uh, go back and uh, send her to the bus station. Okay, right. So, uh, okay, let's uh, try and have a look at this uh, thing. It tells you uh, clothing rental could be the key to a stylishly sustainable fashion industry. Huh? So they are trying to tell us that why go and buy? Huh? Why go and buy when you can uh, when you can rent uh, when you can rent clothes? Huh? That is what they are trying to say. Clothing rental could be the key to a stylishly sustainable fashion industry. But I think this one, uh, this article could have been written quite some time ago, but I can't check and see when it was printed or something like that. Maybe normally it is not, uh, not this year or something like that. Huh? Probably uh, it is normally, ah, you see, uh, there is a date down here already. The date is here. 2018. That is not so long ago, lah, five years ago or something like that, 2018. Right, this thing has been uh, uh, adapted in 2018. Okay, right. Let's go and have a look at it again. And of course, my job is try to make sure that uh, uh, you, uh, you know, you are able to uh, uh, have a look at uh, these things. Huh? Okay, right. And uh, let's see. Okay. And... Uh, I have not printed this. Okay, right. So what does it tell you? First paragraph, an astonishing 235 million items of unwanted clothing were predicted to be dumped in UK landfill in 2017. What does it mean? In the year 2017 itself, they found that there were about 235 million items of unwanted clothing. People use it, use it, use it, and then they don't want to uh, don't want to have it anymore already. Uh, I think most of you are familiar with Joe Baru, right? Irene, you live in Joe Baru. Nadia and Zizin also. Maybe Zizin and Ziyun are new, but uh, you live in Joe Baru. I think uh, there is a place called Kipmat near my house. Kipmat there, there is a shop called Jalan Jalan Japan. All right? This shop, Jalan Jalan Japan, they sell all the old clothes from Japan. All right. They are not very expensive. They are about five ringgit, 10 ringgit, 20 ringgit. But there are lots of clothes. Even my daughter goes there and buy. The other day, she bought a skirt for five ringgit only. She's still wearing it. Uh. So you see, uh, but uh, of course, if you don't like old clothes, people have used it and all that. If you are not that type of person, maybe you may not want to wear it. Uh, but, uh, you, but of course, we take it back home and wash it properly. But, uh, wash it properly and all those things. Um, maybe you can try and go and have a look at it before you go back to Australia. They have a lot of cold clothing and all that also down there. Shoes, clothing, and everything they have down there. All right? You can have a look. They are cheaper in price, of course, than new clothes. All right? So, you see, a white teacher is saying that if you have a shop like this in the UK, you don't have to go and throw away all these items. You get my point now? Why can't you resell it to the poorer people? Isn't it? At least they should be able to use it. People, there are so many people without clothes. Don't tell me everyone can afford to buy clothes. All right. Huh? Uh, as far as I know, huh, uh, if I tell you guys something, uh, of course, this one old story. Huh? If I tell my daughter all these stories, yeah, ah, daddy, you started back all the old story already. Huh? Don't tell me about 50 years ago, what happened? Do you know that 50 years ago or 40 years ago, only one shirt I can buy for one year. 
during my Deepavali, only my parents will buy for me one shirt or one pants only. No, that's how we grew up at that time. I think if you ask your parents or grandparents, they will tell you the same story. Nowadays, children, every day you want to buy something, you have all the money to go and buy. Things are different nowadays. Uh, why I'm sharing my experience is the hardship that we went through during those days to have children like you all and uh, bring them up is uh, not an easy thing. Uh, not an easy thing. That is why teacher tell you, you see like Nadia got an opportunity to go to Australia. Make sure, study hard, Nadia. Uh, study hard. Don't let anything distract you uh, when you are there. Even the most handsome boy also. All right. Uh, why? Because you have a commitment. You have a, you have a, an objective. Uh, but of course, you, you know, we normal girls and boys will have feelings for the other sex. That's a normal thing. Zizin may like a guy. Who know, de definitely, this is a normal thing. Ziyun also may like a girl. Finally, you all will land with somebody. Isn't it? But don't let it to, uh, you know, destroy or do some uh, things to your own studies or something like that. Uh, that is a very, very important thing. Why? Because why I'm sharing this with you? I tell you something which I cannot tell outside of this place. All right. My daughter is in with Instagram with uh, a lot of friends and relatives. All right. One of my relatives, she's very rich. The dad is a neurosurgeon. You know why I'm, I'm sharing you? Can you see my face? There's changes in my face. Why? This 15-year-old girl celebrated her birthday in, a rich, in the rich house. I used to go there and live there also. Whenever I go to Malacca, I go and stay there for one night or something like that. During a party, without a parent's knowledge, she brought a boy up to her room. 15-year-old girl. I got a shock of my life and she's my relative. How do you think I feel? My children know this from the Instagram that she's posting. All right, And she has taken some pictures of a guy or a boy or something like that and posted it on Instagram. And that boy called her up and tell her, if you don't do this, do this for me, I will put these pictures on Facebook. So she is asking the views, opinion of others in Instagram, what am I to do now? See? You know why teacher is telling this to you? Uh, be careful of Instagram and boys and guys who try to do this to you. Uh, never, never. You also, all my children also. Uh, because I'm old enough to be your father. You understand? Uh, so whatever I say in class or something like that, sometimes we joke, we laugh. But at the end of the day, uh, I'm still like your father, I'm your parent. Uh, I, may, I may be different, I may be Indian, but still think that you have a teacher. Teachers are normally somebody that educate you. Uh, educate you, give you knowledge, which is very, very important. All right, get the point or not. So you see, uh, when I heard this, when my daughter confided this in me, the first thing that strike my mind is what? Is my daughter doing this? Natural. Why? She can be influenced by all these things. You get my point or not? Is she also doing this? I asked her point blank on the face. Are you also doing all these type of things? If so, she said, no, la, dad, how can you ask me such a question? He said, she said, I never allowed a man or a guy to touch her. He told me point blank on the face. Huh? So this happened because, uh, you know, uh, we had some conversation, just uh, both of us while driving, uh, driving in the car and going somewhere. And then uh, she told me these things that, uh, Dad, do you know how, how the world is changing and how our relatives and other, uh, other girls and things, our boys are doing things? Uh, and there is another relative, in the, also in uh, KL, studying in a university also. She goes around with, uh, you know, uh, one day this guy, that guy, and then not permanent. So I was quite shocked because I never expected this from Indian girls. You get my point? In those days, if you have my sister or something does like this, they'll be killed. Again. <laughs> I'm sure you also know about all these things because um, uh, Malay families and most of the families are very strict about all this in those days. Huh? So why I'm sharing this with you all is that take care of yourselves. Huh? Because uh, there are guys waiting there to take advantage of uh, you guys. Uh, so you must always be very, very careful uh, in, uh, in your life. Okay, right. Let's uh, carry on. So uh, I, I hope I, uh, you know, my sharing of this will help you, will help you in your future.
that uh, don't get involved in this type of a problem or whatever it is. Huh? And uh, let's continue. Why the average American is estimated to bin? To bin means to throw away. All right, to bin means to throw away uh, 37 kg of used clothing annually. Overconsumption and disposal of unwanted clothing has become a worrying global problem. All right, and in many cases, this clothing is unnecessarily thrown away. You see, uh, what will happen? What, what is the best thing that you can do? Why don't you take these 235 million items and send it to Africa where they don't have clothes? I don't know. Simple, simple gesture. You see, why do you need to go and throw it away into a landfill? All right. So this is something that they should be they should be doing in the UK. All right. Instead of throwing away old clothes. Huh? Right. Let's continue. Filling landfill with clothing and textiles cost the UK alone an estimated 82 million pounds every year. Can you imagine? Why? They have to dig the landfill and throw them away and cover them up again. And it costs 82 million. Why don't you spend the 82 million to send it away somewhere? That would be a better alternative rather than throwing away, throwing them away into a landfill. Am I right or not? Okay, right. Next one. Huh? However, the consumption of clothing is hugely important to the economies of many countries too. That means why? You see, uh, you, meet, you need to keep buying clothes. Otherwise, the shopkeeper will, uh, uh, will not be able to sell. His business won't run. That's what they're trying to tell you here. Right? The economy needs to go on. The economy needs to go on. Huh? If you keep using your old clothes, uh, then what will people think? Uh, people will think that, uh, you know, this, uh, this child or this guy or whatever it is, uh, doesn't buy any clothes or something like that. All right? Okay, right. And uh, the next one, huh? Uh, where were we? We were at, uh, yeah, we were at uh, still paragraph number two. All right. Research from the British Fashion Council, for example, found that fashion contributes 28 billion pounds directly to the UK economy. You can see all this is something connected to business. Huh? So it contains about, uh, it makes about uh, how much money? 28 billion directly to the UK economy. All right. That is the reason why the clothing industry is very, very important. All right. And globally, it is a US 2.5 trillion industry. See, you can see how much of money it makes clothing industry. 2.4 trillion, not billion. All right. 2.4 trillion industry. And number three, despite this, materialistic values and a widespread desire for having new things together with the fact that the fashion industry constantly creates and sell different styles, all right? Have reduced the functional value of clothing, making it easily disposable. Huh? Making it easily disposable. Disposable means what? Can be thrown away. Huh? That is easily disposable, okay, right? And uh, the next one. 100 billion items of clothing are being produced annually and 50% of fast fashion pieces are disposed of within a year. You see, huh? that's why a teacher asks you at the beginning of, uh, of the class, are you fashion conscious? All right. If you don't buy, uh, you know, if you don't change according to the fashion, what happens to the old clothes that you're having? But I'm sure you know that even in our country, sometimes we give away old clothes. Am I right or not? When Deepavali comes or Chinese New Year comes, Hari Raya comes, normally we give away to charity or old, old folks home or something like that. We give away some old clothes. We don't want to keep that. What for? Uh, we give it away for free. All right? So that is what happens in uh, certain families. All right? And uh, fashion and sustainability have historically had an uncomfortable relationship. All right? Fashion and sustainability. Growing concerns over sweatshop labor. What is sweatshop labor? Huge factories where, where they make clothes in the United States. They're called sweatshops. Why? Because uh, sweatshops are play. I think in Kulai also they have. Uh, you know wh what they have? The place where they make all the baju baju and all that. A lot in Kulai. Right? They make the material, t-shirt and all that. I've seen in Kulai there's a lot of these places where they make clothes. 
All right, uh, they get the material and then if you go outside the shop, you can see sometimes they throw away all the material and all that will be lying there for the majlis to come and carry it and go away also. All right, so I think uh, I'm, I don't know exactly where, but I've seen them in Kulai. Uh, I've seen them all the cloth, uh, cloth factories in Kulai. All right, growing concerns over sweatshop labor have seen fashion companies overhaul their social and environmental policies. Consumers, meanwhile, have grown increasingly concerned about where and how garments are made. That means consumers, that means we, uh, people who buy the clothes, they are now getting very, uh, very concerned about where is the clothes actually made and who and what they use to make the clothes. Why? Remember or not, some clothes are made from animals. Right, the, the, the bear and all that, they take the animal fur and all that to make all the mink, mink uh, coats and all those things. They come from animals. And some people do not like clothes uh, from animals. Isn't it? Even your handbag or something like that, rich people like to buy crocodile leather handbags. It's taken from the skin of the crocodile. All right? What about shoes, leather shoes? They come from the cow's uh, skin. Isn't it not? Uh, so you see, this is uh, some people, people who are, have animal rights and all that, they don't like to buy items from uh, this type of things. Uh, from this type of things and all that. Huh? Okay, let's uh, continue, guys. But while fashion makes efforts to become ethical, ethical means what? Have more moral values. Uh, that is become ethical. There are still serious concerns over its environmental impacts. What is environment impacts? How you throw them away or dispose them and you cause environmental issues. Uh, that is the environmental impacts. Huh? Let's go to paragraph number five. Fashion is considered one of the world's most polluting industries. So now you got a point for pollution. If you get an essay or something like that, when you talk about air pollution, water pollution, can you see? You have clothing pollution also. Am I right or not? See, now you realize that after you read this paragraph, something will stick to your mind next time. In future, if you have an essay on pollution, environmental issues, you can think about this. Oh, I remember I studied in a lesson in my class where clothing also can cause pollution because of the disposal of them. Uh, disposal of clothing. Uh? Okay, right. Yeah, and uh, fashion is considered one of the world's most polluting industries. Why? From toxic chemical use to water pollution and also waste. Some 35% of the global total of microfibers. All right? Your clothing is made from microfibers. It's all twined together. Either clothes or cotton or whatever it is. It is all joined together little by little by little. Then only become, become a cloth like that. Right? So they are called microfibers. Uh, they actually call microfibers. All right? And this is thrown in the ocean and comes from clothes and textile. All right? See, huh? even though just now you saw that the, the topic is something about fashion. Ah, yeah, we are doing something about fashion. But when you read, you find that it's got, it's got importance uh, to the lesson. All right? And then, so what's the solution? How do you solve this problem then? Huh? So what is the solution? Why fashion brands are working to limit their levels of pollution, through the creation of organic, also environmentally conscious collections, there is still a need to reduce the huge volume of waste that fashion creates. Right? And next, we go to uh, paragraph number seven. Recycling. All right? Now we go to recycling. Recycling has become an important way to address this. You see, I'm sure you would have bought clothes from H&M. All right, I'm sure. Uh, in fact, two days ago, I was in HNM looking for a, for a baju for my, for my daughter. All right, she loves to go shopping in HNM and uh, I have to wait outside. All right, because they take a long time in the fitting room. Oh God, that's terrible. All right, so, <laughs> so do you go to HNM? Sometimes. Okay, right, so what do you look for? Jeans. Shirts or so. Okay, right. Very good. So, you bought already some things from Australia. Australia expensive, right? Ah, so, you better buy some from here and go. Isn't it? Okay, right. Very good, girl. 
All right, ah. Huh? So, uh, Zizin, have you been to uh, actually in China or here? Here. Oh, that's very good. Which place? Paradigm Mall. All oh, right, I've been there so many. How come I didn't see you? No, I'm just joking. I know you go. So, what do you normally buy? Clothes. Okay, right. Do you bring this guy with you? Leave him at home, huh? He doesn't fit the purpose, right? Uh, so he, he will stand there with the hoodie there and, uh, you know, look at you like that only, huh? So what for bring him? See, the whole day in the class, one hour, you can just sit down there and don't talk and just keep quiet like that. Don't you find life is boring? Why don't you talk to your classmates? Right. Nadia is already going already. You never said a word to her, never say hi to her. You never talk to her at all. Right? You must get to know people. You understand or not? Huh? So it doesn't mean that, you know, get to know a girl is straight away boyfriend, girlfriend, relationship. Not necessary. All right? Huh? You can always be friends, actually. Isn't it? Ah, that is a very important thing. All right? My children, my daughters have boys. They have friends also. They go out with them and all those things. But they never get involved personally. That's what I'm proud of my children. Yes. Uh, whatever they do, they tell me that I'm going here today, that I'm going there today. Why? Because of the trust the father has on them, the mother has on them also. You can go anywhere you want. I let them go anywhere they want. Uh, but the thing is that they always tell me what when they come back or whatever it is. We keep track of them. This is how uh, we bring up children and make them good children in life. You understand? Not? Uh, so when you guys grow up, also remember teachers' uh, experiences I share with you. Uh, this is a very, very important. Why? I'm not only because for my age, I'm not your age, 20 years old teacher or 30 years old teacher or whatever it is. Huh? If you hear my age, you get a shock. All right? Because some people think I'm 48 and 45 and all that. I've tested with some of the students. They say I'm 45, 48. Let's ask Nadia. How old do you think I am? 36. 46. You? 55. You? 60. Oh, I think the other day I asked you already. Irene? You know what's the truth? I'm 68 years old. 68. You can see in the system my age. I don't have to lie to you. You check the system, my age is there. Yeah, I look very handsome, right? That's what I told my wife. I'm going to get married again. She said, don't come back home. Nah, see, Zizi already compliment me idea what to buy for her today. Huh? I say, thank you, Zizi. She says, I don't look like I'm 68. Why? Because of every day I'm teaching. You get, the mind is working. Ah, that's why teacher tell you studies is very important. Once you work your mind, you work, you teach, and you do all activities, you remain young. Ah, you remain young, this is very, very important. All right, if you're just lazy, you sleep in the house, you die faster. Isn't it? I have to live for my children. All right. You know what my boss told me? Don't worry about your age. As long as you can walk, you can come here. You are, you are welcome to teach until you are. You yourself tell me when you want to stop teaching. That's the message from my boss. So how do I feel when I hear that? Happy, right? I feel that, oh, I can teach as long as I want. Isn't it? Uh, so he said, don't worry, even if you can't come here, we'll give you part time you do from the house. That's the message from him. You can see, uh, that's why teacher, you know, as a teacher, this is what I want to share with you all. Huh? Age is just a number. Age is just a number. It's how healthy you are, which is very, very important huh? In the for the teaching sector. Huh? Let's carry on, guys. So where were we? Yeah, recycling has become an important way to address this. H&M, for example, has a successful garment collection scheme where they repurpose their consumers' unwanted clothing. However, the recycling process is problematic environmentally. You know this, isn't it? If you don't want your clothes, you can go and give it back to H&M. You know, isn't it? Ah, you, can, you can send it back. That's what they mean by recycling. All right? You can go to H&M and find out or call them or check on Google. If there is any old clothes that you don't want to use, you can recycle. They will buy it from you. All right? They will actually buy it from you. Huh? That is what they are trying to tell you here. However, 
the recycling process is problematic environmentally. It is also energy intensive and may require use of further fresh materials, all right? Additionally, while it resolves some of fashion sustainability issues, it does not adequately address the problem that consumers buy too much, all right? This is the main problem. What is the main problem? Consumers, especially the girls, huh? they buy too many clothes, unnecessary clothes sometimes. Uh, this is the major problem they are trying to identify. We must reconsider how fashion is sold, encourage consumers to waste less, and ensure that garments have a longer lifespan. Uh, and make sure that garments have a longer lifespan. And leasing has been identified as an innovative business model that gives clothes a longer service life. So what is the alternative? They have started leasing or renting out clothes. All right, leasing. Huh? Instead of buying it, you just go and lease it for a day or something like that, and then you return it back again. So you don't have too many clothes with you. Right, that's all. All right, leasing has been identified as an innovative. What is innovative? Creative. Innovative means a creative uh, idea. All right, innovative business model that gives clothes a longer service life while reducing material use and carbon dioxide emissions, all right? And the possible value of clothing rental market in the UK is predicted to be 923 million pounds, all right? And the model is already well established for certain items, such as dinner jackets and wedding suits for men. Despite this, there are currently just a handful of fashion companies that are using a leasing model, all right? Why do you think the leasing model is not suitable for some people? If I ask you to rent some clothes, will you do it? Dizin, will you go and do a shop, rental shop and rent clothes for you to use? No, why not? Yeah, pastor think of a reason, why not? So she think for so long. Yeah, Nadia, why not? Oh, you will do it. Okay, I'm so sorry. Well, what about uh, Irene? Will you do it? Yes, you will do it also. So cannot ask you any, any, any question. Really. All right. She's still not answering me why, uh, why you won't do it. You see, uh, people won't do it because they don't like to wear other people's clothes. That's the first reason. All right. They consider it dirty, smelly or something like that. How can I wear something that another person or another woman or girl has worn it? I don't want to wear because sweat and all those things. Some people are very conscious about this. They don't want to wear other people's old clothes. All right? So that is the reason why. But of course, uh, some people don't want to buy, wear old clothes because they are rich enough. That's another reason. They have the money. Why should they buy second-hand clothes when they are so rich? Get my point? Okay, right. These are some of the other reasons. Huh? Okay, right. So maybe uh, Zizin is of the second reason. She's very rich. Isn't it? She's a rich girl, right? Ah, see, I know she's a very rich girl. All right. So next time I want to borrow money, I come to you. Huh? All right. She's uh, laughing away. Huh? Okay, right. Let's continue, guys. Okay. And uh, where were we? Yeah, we were at uh, number nine, I think. Huh? Uh, yeah. And number nine, research found there were opportunities for clothing rental at the luxury end of the market. That means expensive clothes uh, at the luxury end of the market. But there was resistance to renting lower price items which were just too easy to buy. And let's look at number 10. If consumers are to engage, rentals need to be convenient, cheap, accessible, and fulfill the desire of having something new. Clothing rental has the potential to reduce waste and increase the lifespan of garments, all right? But to achieve a more sustainable industry, a systemic change in business practice and consumer behavior is needed. So where is this article adapted from? Uh, Theconversation.com, July 31st, 2018, by Naomi Brathwhite, Senior Lecturer in Fashion Marketing and Branding at Nottingham Trent University. Anyone knows who is Naomi Campbell? 
Yeah, very good. She's a UK supermodel, but now she's quite old already. Uh, she may be more than 40 or 50 years old now already. Last time, she was one of the most sexiest uh, black women in, uh, in UK. The moment you see her walking, you feel, wow, this fellow is so sexy. Yeah. I used to wait for her and look at her when I was young. Yeah. Because she's very nice and very pretty. All right. But now, no more already because older. Once you grow older, of course, you lose all your sex appeal and all those things already. Yeah? Sorry to use all these words. But... Uh, it's already, I'm very, very honest with you. It's already, already just natural for men to look at girls in that way. You can't help it. All right. Every girl can't be, uh, can't be your sister or mother, right? So there is some women will be naturally, you look at that woman in a different way. I want this word, woman to be my girlfriend or my wife. Isn't it? Not? So that, that things will change when you, when you change. See, Ziyun is so quiet. Huh? Maybe his girlfriend will make him talk. She will say that I don't like a quiet person like you. Am I right now? Does he talk to girls or not? Is it? He does. <laughs> oh, how come you talk to girls? Teacher, you don't want to talk. Because I'm a man, you don't want to talk to me. No, then why you don't talk in the class? Everybody is talking. He's a new boy. He talks in the class. You know, the Kevin came and he, he and I were talking so nicely. And you are the only one about 30 classes, more than 30 classes, still cannot talk. Ah, you have to change yourself. You see, last time I used to scold uh, Zizin, not scold, but I used to tell her that must talk, must talk. And now she can speak in the class. She's not shy. She talks to Nadia, she talks to everyone in the class now already. See, must change. Huh? We must change slowly. Huh? Adapt yourself. Don't always be the quiet person in the class. No use. You're not going to learn anything. Huh? English is also speaking. If you don't speak, you're not going to learn anything also. All right, let's continue. Fast fashion is a term used to describe clothes based on catwalk designs that are made and put quickly on display in shops. Huh? All right, let's go to the front part and maybe we can try and do it together because I don't think this one very simple. Huh? We try and do it together. How much in weight of clothing does the average American throw away every year? See, uh, yes, 37 kg. All right, you can see the answer in paragraph number. Paragraph number one, I think. Uh, average American estimated bin 37 kg. All right. And number two, uh, how much is the global fashion industry worth? Yeah, B, uh, 2.4 trillion. And number three, how many items of clothing are produced worldwide annually? See, uh, 100 billion. Uh, 100 billion. And number four, what could the clothing rental market be worth in the UK, guys? B, uh, 923 million pounds. Now let's go to the next page. Uh, this one, maybe you need some time. Uh, yeah, you can have a look at it. I give you one or two minutes. Just have a look at it and see if you can get the answer true and false. Very simple. Okay, uh, while you do it, just give me a minute. I need to go to the front and uh, uh, get something that I printed out. So while I'm while I'm back, then we we'll try it. Okay.
Everybody has round bottles. Why did you decide on a square bottle? Yeah, but why did your mind tell you that I like square? Uh, ah, so you see, uh, different people, the mind thing is uh, different. Right or not? All of us will buy round, round bottles, right? Because water bottle means must be round. So you see, he decided to buy a square bottle. I can find something interesting in all this. Huh? Why? It depends on our mind, you know, how we actually look at things. So not everybody will look at things in the same way that we look at. So that is what I'm trying to tell you here. Okay, right. Huh? Let's try, guys, uh, and try and do this uh, thing before uh, we go back. All right. And uh, yes. And uh, yeah, so let's look at the true and false first. Huh? I just had to go in and uh, take this thing for the marking. Otherwise, I will forget to mark the IELTS papers. Okay, right. Never mind. So let's try and have a look at this. It tells you the first one. Huh? Shoppers are increasingly more interested in how their clothes are made. Is that true? Yeah, I think it is true. All right. So in which paragraph did we find that? Paragraph four, huh? yeah, I think so, yeah. Consumers, meanwhile, have grown increasingly concerned about where and how garments are made. Sometimes they touch the cloth and check whether it's cotton or, or whatever it is also. Huh? That is the reason why some people like to buy clothes online, some will never buy clothes online because they don't want to buy online clothes and find that it is not to their liking. Huh? The, the material sometimes will be different. Number two, huh? Around a quarter of fast fashion items that people buy are thrown away within the first year. False, huh? Why is it false? Fast fashion, guys. Fifty percent, huh? Okay, right. You are right. I think it must actually be fifty percent and not uh, around a quarter. Around a quarter will be 25%. So that is the difference. Huh? Number three, recycling doesn't have any environmental impacts. False, because it does. It does have environmental impacts. Okay, right. And number four, one of the benefits of leasing is that Clothes will not be disposed of so quickly. One of the benefits. Is it true? Yes, sir. Huh? Okay, right. I think, yeah, they wrote, they wrote somewhere. Which paragraph, guys? Paragraph 8. Huh? Leasing has been an uh, innovative business. Gives a, yes, it gives clothes a longer service life. Uh, it gives clothes a longer service life. All right. Okay, right. And number five, luxury items are harder to rent to consumers. What do you think? Mm. Number nine, uh, you see, research found that there were opportunities for clothing rental at the luxury end of the market. Uh, so I think uh, the answer should be false because here it says, it's harder to rent to consumers. All right. So the answer should be false. Very good. And now let's look at the find the words. So maybe you can take one or two minutes to have a look, look at it because uh, we, are not, uh, we are not late. We are just uh, on time. So probably we can, we can, we can do it. Huh? No problem, I think.
Okay, can. All right, huh? so let's try and see. So it's already uh, 11. You have about 15 minutes more to go. So we can try this already. The first word, huh? they ask you to take, take uh, check from the text what the word actually is. Huh? First, designed to be practical and useful. It's an adjective in paragraph number three. Function, is it function or functional? Functional, huh? yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's functional. So designed to be active huh? and uh, practical and useful. So it's functional. All right, good. Uh, number two, people working in factories with bad conditions and very little pay. It's a two word noun. Very good, sweatshops. So that is the meaning of sweatshop. Uh, the sweatshop means people who work in factories with very bad conditions and also very little pay. All right. In the 1920s and all that, this happened in America when the textile industry was growing. Uh, but now in uh, certain poor countries, it happens like Bangladesh. Uh, Bangladesh, they put you all in a small place and make you to work. All right. So that is what happens. Uh, so now that we have all these uh, labor laws and all that, so that uh, employers won't bully you and all that. Huh? You see, in Malaysia, you cannot employ uh, people who are underage. Huh? You cannot get people who are below 18 to work in your factory or something like that. Cannot. They must be above 18 years old. Otherwise, it's called child labor. Huh? Otherwise, you'll call child labor. I think in China also, there are complaints of child labor. I'm sure you know this. Huh? You're coming from China because there are lots of poor people, poor families in China that send their children to work in these factories. They don't have a choice. Uh, either they work in the factories or starve. They don't have money. All right? So that is one of the reasons why you have these sweatshops, actually. Uh? Number three, thin, light, artificial threads used for making cloth. Yeah, fibers. All right? Micro fibers. Uh? That's uh, correct. Very good. And number four, deal with. It's a verb in paragraph seven. You deal with something. No idea? Yes? Re? Result, is it? Resolve. Oh, you mean uh, result. Yeah, correct. You're right. R-E-S-O-L-V-E. -E. I heard it as result. Result. So resolve. Okay, very good. That's a correct word. Uh, you deal with something means you resolve something. All right, very good. And number five. Solve something. This one also paragraph seven. Uh, now you're stuck because you have deal with resolve and then you have uh, the other one. <laughs> so the same word, you need to find another word that means that. Address. Very good boy. Uh, so the answer is address for number. Uh, number what? Yeah, number, uh, number five. Very good. Address a problem. All right. And then you have Number six, huh? successful and having existed for a while. This one is in paragraph number eight. Establish, yeah, you are right. So the answer should be established. It has been around for a while. Very good. And then you have number seven, a small number. Paragraph number eight also. Very good, a handful. Uh, a handful is actually a very small number. All right. So you see uh, how English words are used. So you don't think handful means or uh, so much of thing. Uh, a handful means just a little bit only. Uh, just a little bit only. Uh. And uh, number eight is easy to get. Accessible. Correct. Uh, easy to get will be accessible. Uh. All right. Very good. So those are some of the words that we actually uh, found. So I hope the meaning stays in your mind. Uh, this is very important when we go through exercises. Why? When we are going through like this, you get an opportunity to, uh, uh, what I mean is the, to know these words. And then you can use them later on, either in your studies or while you speak to people or something like that. Uh, it's uh, very important to know words and remember that. Don't today you do, then today you forget. No use. All right? So you must remember, uh, if you have the time, Always try to go back and look at the lesson one more time. So that will make you to refresh your mind what you did for the day. 
Uh, that will improve your thing. Uh. That is what every teacher, even in the class in school also, they tell you the same thing. Every day's lesson must go and revise. All right? If you don't revise, then uh, it's going to be a problem. Uh, it's going to be a problem. Huh? Okay, right. And let's look at number six before we call it a day. All right? What does it say? Choose the correct adverb to complete the definitions below. So what are the adverbs you have? You have, uh, what is an adverb? An adverb describes a verb. All right? An adverb, it describes a verb. So don't forget. Huh? So what are the adverbs we have? Adverbs normally, huh? or normally, or usually, they end with a L-Y. Uh, normally, they end with a L-Y, uh, adverbs. So, uh, uh, Nadia, you try to remind teacher, uh, I sent to you some uh, grammar stuff and all that before you go back to Australia. If I forget, you tell me, but I can send it through your handphone uh, so that you can keep it with you and have a look at it uh, you know, later on. All right. And uh, if you want anything, WhatsApp can use from Australia, right? No problem, isn't it? Uh, always you can communicate with teacher. No problem. Uh, I'm not the selfish type that once you're gone out of sight, out of mind, or something like that, no. Ah, so, uh, uh, yeah, you know, my students uh, always keep in touch with me. I have so many of them until my WhatsApp is full now. Yes, because uh, I like keeping in touch with them, asking them what they are doing now, uh, what, uh, wh how is their life now, and all those things and all that. Huh? Okay, right, let's continue the last one. Uh, what is the words you have? Additionally. Additionally means. Uh, you know, something else. Besides this, what you can add. Huh? So additionally, and then you have adequately. Adequately means is something enough for you or not? Huh? Adequate. And then annually means yearly, of course. All right. And historically means something that happened in history. All right. So if you say that Malacca is historically very famous, that means there are lots of things of history in Malacca. So that is historically. Huh? Increasingly means opposite of increasingly is decreasingly. So that is increasingly going up. Huh? And unnecessarily means, of course, not necessary. That's it. Huh? Now let's try number one. Not needing to be done. Yeah, I think it should be unnecessarily. Once a year. See, very simple, right? Having existed for a long time, historically, more and more, Increasingly, very good. As well as what has been mentioned before. Additionally, in the last one, in a way that is good enough or satisfactory. Adequately. Huh? You see what they ask you to do that. Don't run away. They ask you to do your own sentence. Can you try? Uh, try and make some sentence with these words. Just write there in the paper there enough already. Try and do huh? uh, six of them. I think yesterday there was a, a there was a concert in uh, uh, in uh, in Kuala Lumpur, you know, Nadia Bukit Jalil, uh, by this singer from Australia, uh, singer from India, uh, music uh, director from uh, India, A. R. Rahman, and you know who sang a, a, a Tamil song in the concert, Siti Nuraliza. <laughs> you know her, right? Uh, she's a very versatile singer, and she sang a Tamil song, one of A. R. Rahman's songs uh, in the. In the concert, live concert in uh, in uh, Bukit Jalil. Okay, right, and that is done.
Okay, America is full of uh, shooting, shooting, shootings, and nothing but shootings. Huh? It's very bad. <laughs> okay, done, guys. Oh, we only have three minutes left. Thought we had a lot of time. 